Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the North Central Washington MVP interview series brought to you by Career Connect Washington and the Apple STEM Network. I'm your host, Carrie Horning, Career Connected Learning Specialist with the NCESD 171. And if you're with us often, uh, you might notice that I'm not actually in my home office right now. Um, we were doing a, an incredible uh, career panel, career fair uh, at, a, at a school district and some soft skills clinics and didn't have enough time to get back to my home office. So I'm coming to you from one of our local schools in North Central Washington. So I appreciate them you know, giving me the, uh, the space. So today's episode is going to be a great one. Uh, we are highlighting Colville Confederated Tribes uh, as yet another of our Career Connected Learning Most Valuable Partners. And as I always like to remind you, our goal today is very simple. It's to introduce our community partners throughout North Central Washington to one another. And a win today looks like each of you leaving with a greater understanding of the work that's being done all around you. So grab your lunch, sit back, and get ready for an extra dose of professional nourishment. Today's guest is Megan Francis. She is the Youth Development Program Manager with Colville Confederated Tribes. And I uh, always like to do a little bit of an introduction. I was lucky enough to uh, have a moment to catch up with Megan earlier this week. And I can say she is as committed and as passionate about her work as anyone I have ever encountered. Uh, she's a Gonzaga grad. She has, uh, you know, weaved and ebbed and flowed with life, uh, but is definitely a Zag and uh, has been working with the tribes for more than four years. Um, she loves to sew in her free time and she's all in on youth sports, especially basketball with her son, who I'm just now realizing that we've got a whole, you know, connection ourselves with being sneakerheads. So uh, I'm super <laughs> excited for this episode. Megan, welcome in. Thank you. I appreciate the time here with um, CCW, and I would love to connect with any of our future partners. Awesome. Excellent. Well, again, thanks for being one of our Career Connected Learning MVPs, and I think it's time. Are you ready to kick this off? Yeah, let's go. All right, let's do it. Okay, so... Um, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that we had a chance to connect earlier this week. I always do a little bit of a prep with everyone that, that I interview. I cannot believe how much I learned from our initial conversation. I mean, it, it really blew my mind away. So I think for our guests that are joining us and that will watch this on the recording, can you share with us a little bit about Colville Confederated Tribes, the history, the culture, uh, and the communities that are represented? Yeah, so... Kind of briefly, uh, we do give professional development for school districts on this, so we can take up to two hours talking about this. Um, the Cobble Confederated Tribes is 12 confederated tribes. We represent four communities, um, Nespelum, Keller, Inchalim, and Omac. Mm -hmm. uh, we are the largest employer in North Central Washington and in Okanagan County. We have over 3,038 3,338 direct jobs, and we have over 10,000 tribal members that are enrolled in the tribe. We speak four different dialects here on the Colville Confederated Tribes, and um, we, we encourage a lot of cultural practices within our school districts, and so we're creating those partnerships in the school districts and in our communities. Uh, that's terrific. Uh, I, I I know that was kind of a loaded question with a very you know limited time, but to to know that you offer that type of education um, outside of this, that's terrific. So again, for anybody who's watching this after the recording, uh, we'll make sure that Megan's uh, email address is available to you in the chat uh, so that you can reach out to her for that. And I think another point that I would like to reiterate on that is in in. You're going to have to correct me. I, I, I did not actually write it down and take notes. You're the largest employer in Okanagan County. Is that correct? Yeah. All right. yeah. We are the largest employer in Okanagan County. Um, we have a, approximately 384 million output from the tribe wow. and all of our employees. That's incredible. I also wanted to touch that we're our usual and accustomed territories is 39 million acres from starting from Revelstoke, Canada, mm -hmm. all the way down into the Palouse area, into Oregon and Idaho for okay. our Nazpers tribes. 
Yeah, very good. Thank you for that. Awesome. Uh, okay, so let's kind of get to the meat and potatoes of this too. We both uh, have a, a, a play a role with Career Connect Washington. I know you're a new board member. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I want to ask about that. So Colville Tribes was awarded one of our program builders grants. Well, not ours, but a program builders grant. Can you tell us about that? What type of programming, uh, you know, is the tribe creating with that grant? So we're calling it the Tuktum Tim Tim, which means um taking care of the earth. Yeah. So it's a natural resources career pathway that we're working on with three local school districts, like Roosevelt School District, or Grand Coulee Dam School District, Inchalim School District, and OMAC School District will be implementing CTE courses in their high schools. And those CTE courses will be dual credit with Wenatchee Valley College and will provide an internship during the summer in those natural resources fields. And those will be paid internships and they'll also receive credit for them. That is terrific. So they're, they're, uh, any of the students who are involved will receive regular high school credit, but then also dual credit with the college and they're going to get a paycheck? Yeah. Pay yeah, internship. that's it. That's amazing. So do you know, and I apologize, this might be a loaded question, but do you know about how many students might have this opportunity? Is there a, a, a ceiling or a limit? Well, we put 25 down for the internship. That's how many natural resource interns I had last summer. Okay. Um, the youth development program, we have the summer youth employment program that partners with our TANF program and so we have a memorandum of agreement that will monitor the summer youth employment program and they'll pay for it so last year we had 225 youth working during the summer and 25 of them were in natural resources okay yeah and I want to dig in deeper you know to that as well uh you know I had a chance to to talk and and learn so much from you earlier in the week but again, for our listeners, that the program builder grant is amazing. And it's also kind of just the beginning. Uh, you know, you've already kind of alluded to the fact that you've got this deeper programming programming with the internships. So tell us about that opportunity and kind of, um, you know, where you see that going, how you see that growing. Okay, so the Colville Confederated Tribes, as I mentioned, we have over 3,000 employees. We employ people in natural resources, education, nursing, um, clerical, forestry management, all different areas. So our goal is after we accomplish this grant to apply again and focus in different areas. Um, we have our Head Starts that need teachers. We have a convalescent center that needs um, nurses. Mm -hmm. And we have local health hospitals that could also use more professional staff. So mm -hmm. our goal is to create these pathways in our schools so once they graduate, they're ready to be employed. Yeah, I love that. And and uh, will the actual, the initial program builder grant that we were speaking about in the first question, will that will that mesh directly in with the, the internships or is that two separate uh, opportunities for the students? They'll mesh directly within it. Uh, we'll, we'll utilize our TANF funding to pay for their internship. Um, right. and we might, who knows, uh, we might fund more than 25 because we'll be able to fund more than 25, Yeah, but that's what we wrote in the grant and that's what we had last year. But we hope that with our marketing that a lot of students sign up for these classes. I know in February, that's when they start getting ready for the next year and looking at the different courses that they can select. So we're boots on the ground right now, getting ready to create those frameworks, create the marketing so the students know that this is available to them in those three high schools. Yeah, I And eventually that. we could take this framework and move it to all of our high schools because I did forget to mention that the Colville Tribes has eight cooperative agreements with eight different school districts on or near the reservation. Okay. And we go into the schools and work with those students. And so this is a pilot project for yeah. three of the schools. Okay. So do you know the, off the top of your head, do you know the other five districts uh, by heart to share out? Of course. Yeah. Miss right. School District, Wilbercrest and Keller, Republic, Pascal Sherman Indian School, yeah. and Keller School District. Keller okay. is separate, but they do have Wilbercrest and Keller as well. 
Okay. I love this because, you know, not only is the tribe the number one employer, but you just talked about it. You, you healthcare, you, you know, marketing, you, you, I mean, all the different aspects when somebody might hear this and think about, well, you know, what, what job am I going to do? You're going to do any job, every job, just like, you know, you could go to work at an accounting firm and not have one iota of an idea how to do the accounting work, but for sure they need, you know, admin, uh, you know, maybe they need an attorney, maybe they need sales or marketing to bring new customers in. And that's something with career connected learning that we love to, to talk about, like, don't feel like you have to pigeonhole yourself into one area because you could love agriculture, but not be able to farm, but you could certainly go to work for somebody who is in the agricultural, you know, arena, whether it's a, a you know, a field person or again, same thing, um, you know, attorney, et cetera. So um, I love that. Thank you for, for sharing that. So, yeah. um, okay, so let's move on here. Another one, another question. Uh, when we prepped uh, for this interview, uh, I came to realize that we've got some mutual friends, which bring big smiles to our faces. Yeah. Uh, Joshua Porter, Dr. Sue King, Grant Story, just to, to name a few. So how can organizations or individuals from outside of the tribe partner with Confed uh, Colville Confederated Tribes um, to to support their initiatives and or collaborate on these new projects? I would be your main contact. If any okay. partners would like to partner with the Colville Confederated Tribes, um, we're here. We're willing to work with people. I have nonprofits that we have letters of support for grants where we can bring our students to their place, whether it's outside at the YMCA campground or at a fossil quarry. Mm -hmm. Um, also the community of practice that I established, not I, that we established with Joshua and Dr. Kane and Grant Story, they, we opened up this community of practice to allow people to come in and bring their ideas and learn from each other. Mm -hmm. And I hope that practice continues and that we can grow our network because our goal was sustainability and sovereignty. So we're talking about what's sustainable for our future. What do we want our students to know? And that in turn is about sovereignty. What is sovereignty and what, what rights do tribes have and what can they do to help implement a better future for tomorrow? And that community of practice stemmed off sustainability and sovereignty, but I'm here and I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm not going anywhere. So if you do want to work with the Colville Confederated Tribes, you can start by reaching out to me directly and we can see where things go. You know, we have schools interested in doing greenhouse management and schools interested in raising salmon in the classroom. Yeah. And I have connections with the tribe for professionals who are already doing that work. So whether it's for an advisory board or actual implementation in classrooms, I can help connect you with the different school districts that we work with. Very good. So some of those, you know, just to kind of stay there, some of those partnerships and collaborations, can you talk to us a little bit deeper about maybe one of your favorites? It would be Joshua's Sustainability and Sovereignty. Um, we really wanted to focus on CTE in mm -hmm. high schools. Joshua Porter works for Western Washington University, so he does a lot of work with older kids, and so his last grant had to do with K-12, and it was perfect for me to align with him because I was able to encourage my local school districts to become a part of what he was doing, where OMAC school district was in the same room with Orville and Pateras and Methow Valley. Whether it was in person or Zoom, we were able to communicate with each other about some of our goals, some of our practices, and the best way to work with other entities. Yeah. That was my favorite one. <laughs> Very cool. I, I love, I mean, I, I kind of want to dig deeper into that. You know, what else can you tell us about that? What what actually was some of the hands-on or the, you know, the go-to work that that was being done? Is it, Can you talk a little bit more about that? Well, from that relationship, um, Sue saw in me to be an executive board member. Mm -hmm. So that happened. Um, learning more about this grant. And then we applied for it and we received it. That happened. 
Yeah. And it was just really great to communicate with the different school districts that were practicing sustainability. My favorite one was Orville School District. They had a greenhouse and they have farm to table. They were sowing vegetables and harvesting vegetables during the winter time. I thought that was really interesting. The kids were loving all of the food that they were growing. And they were also doing a practice of collecting natural seeds and growing them from seeds. And most of them were native plants to the area. So I think that was great work to like see and learn. And now I'm telling all my schools about it. And the Spielum School District had just applied for a grant for outdoor greenhouse. So I just think it's great how one little ripple can create like a big effect in communities, especially small communities, rural communities, and being able to connect with these professionals who have already done the work. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, the reality is if somebody else is interested in one of these program builder grants and maybe they've just heard something that they like, they could reach out and, uh, you know, gain some insight from you and or from, you know, Joshua uh, and maybe go about this for their own district. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. I love it. So the the age of students that were involved in the greenhouse, was that uh, across the board 9th through 12th? Or did that dip down even into the younger ages? Do you know? I I know it was more focused on high school because okay. it was a CTE class, I think. They did a lot of business. They tracked their, because they would sell the plants back to the state to go plant or they would go replant them themselves. And so the students that were telling us about it seemed like they were more in high school. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So that's terrific. Uh, I know we started this interview, you know, talking a little bit about the tribe and, and really kind of focusing on that program builder grant. And I think it's probably a good time for me to just interject and remind everybody and, and myself included that round 12 is, is just about to open up, I think here in the next week or so, uh, or maybe two weeks, um, not sure on my dates, but, but anyways, round 12 of the program builder grants is coming, uh, quickly. So if, if anything here interests you, uh, jump. And if you've got another program that you're hoping to build out, uh, the funding is coming. So that uh, I think I think I want to say it's around the 12th or the 16th of, of, uh, of October. So um, all right. So okay, uh, let's go here. We got another question on, um, uh, you know, uh, on the on the dock here. Um, and it's, this is always one of my favorite questions, because, you know, the work that we do, we all love it so much. And I could tell, like I said, when I was speaking with you, your passion for all of this, is there a student success story, uh, pro probably not with this program builder grant, because it's so new, but in one of your prior roles that you can share that it, there was just such a positive impact for that person, or even, you know, maybe collectively for the tribe? Is there, is there something that stayed with you uh, through the years? that you could share with us? Yeah, absolutely. I started this role a year ago, but one of my favorite stories was last summer, one of our students in OMAC worked at the movie theater or like a ice cream parlor, you know, like a small business, you know? Yeah. And so they enjoyed working their summer. They kind of were like blase and their grades were decent. You have to have a 2.0 to work in our program. But after he realized that he could work in natural resources and fisheries with his uncle, who's passionate about his job, he interned at the fish hatchery. And just his whole trajectory changed. His attitude changed. He was excited. He was hands-on learning. He was actually you know hands-on with the fish and doing yeah. real work and he was so proud of himself and so happy he's looking forward to this natural resource classes he wants to work for our natural resource division and so I feel like it just kind of ignited in him and gave him a light to see what he's capable of what he enjoys what's his purpose in life and just the hands-on experience of being around like the culture of us, you know, um, taking care of our earth, taking care of our salmon. I feel like it really just gave him a different pivot in life. And it really made me happy to see his case manager see that in him and tell me 
wow, this kid's totally different, you know, especially after working at the hatchery. So I think it's really cool and it's exciting to know that one kid had a difference just in our summer youth employment program. I can only imagine having this CTE course in three of our high schools Mm -hmm. and the kind of impact we can make, whether they're tribal or non-tribal. You know, most of our employees are non-tribal here. So if we can get those students in here to take care of the earth, like we are, like our goals and objectives and our values and our mission, I think it's going to make their lives better. So that really, it really hit home for me when I heard of that particular story. And I'm like, this builder grant is perfect timing to create this pathway for all these students who are struggling and who don't want to be in the classroom and who don't want to even be there at school. And so to give them something that they actually care about and want to learn about, I'm really excited for them. Yeah, absolutely. I love that story on so many levels. I mean, uh, you know, personally, uh, my youngest daughter is in, uh, she's studying environmental sciences, uh, you know, down at San Diego State. So uh, that's kind of near and dear. But it's it's that one, just like you said, one student to see that difference. Uh, that's why we're all out here. Because the other, you know, thought process and what I talk about all the time is we're really, it's like Johnny Appleseed. We're Johnny Appleseed. Like uh, we're planting one at a time and we're hoping that grows and it becomes more and more and more. And when you have that success story, number one, of course, awesome. It's amazing for that student. It, like you said, changes the trajectory of their lives. But then I think it's that fuel, right? That fires what we do to keep us going and, in, in, you know, fighting the good fight to say, listen, you know, CTE is important. Career connected learning is important. Uh, applying for these program grants to build these programs is important. Yep. Everybody's busy. Yeah. Nobody has a bandwidth to take on extra things, but when we do look what happens. So I love that. Thank you for sharing it. That's why it's my favorite question. Every time I do yeah. these uh, these podcasts, I just it's, it is my favorite question. So uh, I, two things. I want to do a little housekeeping. I did put uh, your email address in the chat. So anybody who is in chat can see that. If you joined us afterwards, I'm not sure that you do. So I'm going to try to add it again. I think I just did that. And then before I move on, are there any questions from uh, from our live ad- audience? I don't necessarily have a question. You know me, I always talk. So I I love it. um, (laughs) That's why we get along. (laughs) Um, I, um, you know, had put in there, like, I would love to connect. And thank you for putting in um, Megan's uh, contact information. um, Because uh, I'm with the Boys and Girls Club in Moses Lake. And um, we have a greenhouse. And we really have kind of struggled to make it fantastic because we don't have somebody with that expertise. Um, but I would love to chat at another time and see if um, we can um, have an intern here, or if if we can connect with that. And we are actually looking at a Career Connect Washington um, grant. And so if we could partner up with that, it would be absolutely fantastic. So um, I'm so glad that you are presenting today and appreciate the information. So um, yeah, uh, don't screen my calls. You'll hear from me soon. (laughs) I look forward to it, Kim. Thank you. I'm still learning too. So uh, what I'm doing here is I'm creating a network, you know, utilizing other school districts who have already successfully went through the USDA to get farm to table and using those frameworks and sharing them. So I'd be happy to share them with Moses Lake Boys and Girls Club. Awesome. Ramona, did you have a question? No question. I just want a comment. I'm just so excited to see Megan and, and um, you know, just listen more about the work that you're uh, doing on the tribe. And, and uh, we're just so grateful uh, here at the hospital for everything that you guys are doing. And so just wanted to say hi. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So listen, we're, we're winding down. We've got just about five minutes left. And, and I think, Megan, what I'd like to do now is just kind of open it up. Uh, is there anything else that you want to share that we haven't had a chance yet to you know really touch on? In, in, anything still on your mind? Um, I'm not quite sure. I just know that um, with 
the community of practice that we established with Joshua and Dr. Sue Kane and Linda Dezellum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I lean on them so much, especially Grant story. I forgot to name drop Grant, <laughs> um, creating these advisory boards and making it right. Um, Shandy Abrahamson was amazing as well with creating the awareness of what CTE is and what is mastery based learning and what are these other opportunities that school districts have to create working internships into credits and so that's another goal of mine is to create that opportunity for our kids who are just shy of graduating or who need those extra credits to give them that opportunity if you work for us during the summer then you should be given those elective credits. I think to do that, we have to work with our school districts, but we have great relationships with them. So I hope if anyone has any experience doing that, <laughs> uh, reach out to me. I know that the legislator just passed that this year, so we're still kind of learning more about it. But mm -hmm. any opportunity to give our students for the work that they've already done mm -hmm. or, you know, that they're already doing I think that they should be given credit for that yeah another program that we are working on is our tiny homes mm -hmm. in Inchland we have usually about eight summer youth employees who work with a general contractor to create tiny homes and we're still like learning I don't think they have the electrical or the plumbing in them but we want to create more opportunities. You know, how can we use these tiny homes? Can we create more tiny homes? Um, we all, we're also working on giving those students credit for the construction time with Spokane Community College. So articulating all of these things that are already being done at this level, how it levels out with college stuff, you know, we should be giving them college credit for some of the work that they're doing. So that's yeah. another thing that I'm also working on. Perfect. You know, this is the perfect, um, you know, venue for that to, to put out information and to ask for inf information back, because I think I say it, you know, pretty, pretty much every single week that we do this, that the, the entire idea is, uh, of the MVP is to introduce everyone to each other. What, this is what's going on uh, and, and learn more about it because we can partner. And honestly, hearing you talk about the tiny homes, I'm thinking, I, I smell another program builder grant, uh, you know, coming down the road to try to figure out how you can partner with somebody and get that plumbing and get that electrical in. I mean, I just had a conversation yesterday with a, a, a gentleman who owns his own construction company mm -hmm. and they can't find electricians. Everyone's retiring and he's this yeah. close to retiring himself in terms of construction. But yet while he's still there, it's extremely difficult to get jobs done because they don't have an electrician or they don't have a plumber. They're pulling in the basin area, the Columbia basin, they're pulling all the way outside of, you know, Clee Ellum, uh, you know, for that work. So yeah. Um, yeah, right here, this is it, right? Put out what you need, put out what you're doing. And then hopefully, you know, the, the word will get out. Um, but for sure, I think I, I think I can, since another program builder grant coming coming down the pike <laughs> yeah now that we know that this is available and it's achievable yeah we're really looking forward to applying for more grants I know yeah. this is a baby step for us it's a huge leap for us but yeah. we're really looking forward to creating more opportunities for our youth like you said um the electric and plumbing we can't get a plumber around here. I know when I lived on the Spokane reservation, there was one guy and he was near retirement too. Yeah. So just letting these kids know how much money they can make right out of high school and letting them know how it's not an easy job, but once you understand it, it becomes very easy. You know, um, you become a professional really. Yeah. Absolutely. For sure. Well, listen, I hate to end this one. I mean, I think we could go on and on. I, I feel like, you know, we've got at least another half an hour in this, but, but uh, I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Uh, it is uh, almost 1245. So I just want to say again, thank you, Megan, for being one of our MVPs. Uh, no doubt um, you are, you're killing it up there. Thank you for that. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Keep doing that good work. Uh, and thanks for being our MVP. Everybody, thanks for joining us. Uh, the 
contact information is in the chat if you're here with us live. Megan, real quick before we sign off, do you want to say your email address? It's long and it's my name and it might be easier to go to callvilletribes.com and go to the bottom to our directory, but it's Megan, M-E-G-H-A-N dot Francis, F-R-A-N-C-I-S dot K-Y-P at Callville Tribes with an S dot com. Perfect. That'll do it. And going to the website will be perfect. So listen, thanks everybody for being here today. Uh, that's going to end the MVP podcast. Everybody go out and have a great week and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.